Hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm John Hartledge. Today, I have a very special guest. Now, she's not only an esteemed colleague as the wine director of uh, Crystal Springs Golf Resort in Hamburg, New Jersey, she's also a very close friend. I'm so excited to have Suzanne Wagner with me on my deck talking about wine. Well, thank you very much, John. It's great yes. to be here. Excellent. Um, today, a two-part episode, and we are on the deck. So yes, we're talking about white wine some Pinot Grigio, and some dessert wine. Can't wait to get to it. So, let's, let's chat, chat wine. wine. So here we go. I've got some water and now Suzanne is from Germany. In Europe it's um, very typical uh, to have water at uh, room temperature or tepid. So I decided to get unchilled water for her but I will put just a teeny bit of cold on it with my frozen lemons we talked about it in one of my other episodes. I'm really excited lately about freezing citrus and using them as the ice cubes if you will. Okay, so. I just like to have a little bit of citrus to clean the palate. Uh, I even have a little mint plant behind me. We might grab a little mint at some point, which would be fun. It's a but, great idea. Thank yeah, you so, so much. It's, uh, You're cheers. very thoughtful. Thank you. <laughs> so Suzanne, uh, what part of Germany, if you can tell me a little about, oh, mainly because we will be getting to some German wine in a little bit mm -hmm. oh, with our episode. Tell us where you're from. I'm actually from the very southern part of, New of um, Germany, uh, close to Lake Constance which is right at the border to Switzerland, between Switzerland, Austria, and Germany. And um, it's a small region called Swabia. Swabia. Swabia, and it's really smack in the middle between Stuttgart, Germany, and Zurich, Switzerland. It's right in between. Okay, yeah. so, so much hospitality-oriented um, uh, attractions and, uh, and culture around that area because of Zurich, yes or no? Maybe not as much. No? It's more quiet? <laughs> more agricultural than oh, cultural. Oh, it is. Okay. Yes. How yes. close to the Black Forest? About two hours. About two hours. Okay. Two and a half hours here in Baden-Baden. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My son is so into clocks, and he went through his clock phase, and, and of course we had the cuckoo clock, and it's a, it's a Black Forest. Germany is famous for their, right. for their clocks. Right. So, but let's jump in. Um, so when we were talking, you, you said you really prefer uh, Alsace, uh, the Pinot Grigio. When it comes to Pinot Gris, I prefer Alsatian. Notice the different name. So in Alsace, uh, which what, and you said the main reason was because of all the cultural history between France and Germany, back and forth. Oh my, yes. You know. Now there's a lot of history because the region, Alsace, the region belonged uh, to France first, but then it became German and it went back to France. So, um, Whoever owned it kind of hit the jackpot because Alsace is a great growing region for grapes. And uh, Alsace produced some of the best wines in the world four, five hundred, six hundred years ago. It was Alsace first. Uh, terrific wines. Um, and of course, the royal court in Europe, in England, in Russia, in Spain, they preferred Alsatian wines. It was wow. high in demand. And everything went well because the region of Alsace is right next to the Rhine River. And if you have a river close to your wine growing region, in those days, you had transportation. So yes, you could actually that ship really, the wine. What we usually don't think about, I'm so glad you said that as a reminder, that it's not just the water for the agriculture from those rivers, no. it's the transportation right. and being able to send your goods to ports and then ocean, you right. know, train, wherever, right. however you're going to, uh, yeah. to transport products. The wines had to be shipped north, where the wealthy towns of Hamburg were, Bremen, ah. um, Rotterdam, Amsterdam, that's where the wealth was. And through the um, merchants of the Hanseatic League, the wine could be transported all over the world. 
that was key at that time. Yes. So unfortunately, 1618 came around and the 30 year war started. Yeah. And the uh, wine industry, of course, came to a halt because they had to grow other things to survive. And uh, the wine industry never, never came back to its old glory. Wow. So they still make world class wines. Other wine region evolved, and uh, yeah. it's just yeah. There's a lot of competition. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. But so the it's, wines are excellent. Yeah. I love they, them. What I always notice when I taste the, particularly the Pinot Gris, there's just this different kind of body than a Pinot mm. Grigio, and I and I picked one of the the best areas. I really love uh, Friuli. Pinot Grigio. Notice I'm switching this over because I'm going to let Suzanne open her favorite. She gets to open the Alsatian and I'm going to open the Italian. Uh, and Italian, uh, this is uh, northeastern Italy. Uh, Friuli, notice one of the hot spots uh, in Italy for uh, Pinot Grigio, but more of a crisp. And when it's very hot, like we, we got together today to film and when's the sun going to cooperate? Because the sun was so warm today. And oh, you notice the labels how the labels are uh, are sweating. I lost a couple of labels and I have to, and this will happen. So I want, this is a teaching moment. I take a cloth. I don't want to pull the label off, but I just want to get the sweat off that label so that it doesn't come off. And then you can, you know, see what these wines are. And that was it. Just a little, just a little sweat. Okay. So let's open. Excellent. So what we are expecting is um, what we're expecting, of course, is a little fuller body with the Pinot Gris and maybe a little more crisp with the Pinot Grigio. So two different names, Italian name Pinot Grigio and a Pinot Gris uh, for the Alsace. But our first discussion was the name of this producer. I said, Willem. She goes, uh-uh, right away, Suzanne <laughs> gave me the look. And when Suzanne does that look, everything stops. You have to focus right on it. No, it's Willem. And it's two L's, so the L gets the L gets the, the stress, right? If you're German, you can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not Willem. There is a Wilhelm, a Wilhelm. This is Wilhelm. Yes? Yes. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> Although they'd probably laugh at me if I did that. <laughs> Wilhelm. <You know? laughs> You know, well, we have this thing about languages. We, she says she never gets to talk French unless she's with me. That's right. <laughs> and I always believe if the wine is from France and the label is in French, try and pronounce it French. Absolutely. Um, if it's German, give it a good try and pronounce it the right way. I think every wine deserves that respect. Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so let's, um, I need, yes, so let's taste. I'm thinking that's gonna be heavier, so let's try this Pinot Grigio first. Let's go here. And now that I do that, so I do have this little spit cups and they match, so I thought we'd use those. Very nice. So let's do a little tasting, because I, I looked at the table and I said, oh, wait a minute. How are we gonna taste two wines? <laughs> there they are, going to spit cups. Gotta have them. Oh, it's just zesty and, mm -hmm. and bright. Yeah. I really love the aromatic. Yeah, that citrus is so nice on a hot day like today. Hmm. It's just juicy. There's a little residual sugar. In a, in a citrus kind of way, I'm almost feeling like this is northeastern Italy, it's on the Adriatic, but I just was transported down to the, um, the, the lemon, the lemon uh, and limoncello areas. Oh my golly. <laughs> yeah. This is a, I'm such the, a I'm pleasure. on the Amalfi Coast right now on our little deck scene. This is delightful. Very nice surprise. I didn't expect so much flavor. See? From this Pinot Grigio. See, now what's gonna happen? It's gonna be even better. You know, I think we got the setup. Yeah. Just lovely. Well, I, I, I would hate to spit it, but it's what we need to do to keep our brains, mm. to keep our palate okay. If we consume too much, we're yeah. broke, we're horizontal. Really we well balanced, that. very well made. I'm really happy with yeah. this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Now it's not inexpensive, it's $16. 
but the purveyor that I got it from, he said he sells that uh, as opposed to a couple of the big name brands that are sold for 19, 20, 21 dollars. You know, it's so, but really classy. Yes, it really it is. It fits the price point. Mm -hmm. yeah. A rinse or a full? Oh, a rinse, sure. So we we'll rinse, um, we know we're tasting, so we'll rinse with wine rather than water. We don't want to rinse the glass with water because then it dilutes the alcohol. So you still have an alcoholic environment. It's the best to rinse with it. And like mediums, wine and wine. So, and also because this was so fragrant, this uh, Pinot Grigio, we don't want to influence this new taste. There's that sweet nose. It's like a sweet musky nose. Yeah. This, I always have a hard time describing. I'm gonna say it. I love it when this comes up. Je ne sais quoi. Well, mm. you, you tried. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's just that thing. There's this smell, and whether it's Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, uh, even even the Gewurztraminer uh, Traminer from mm -hmm. Alsace. Mm -hmm. I get this little musky melon sweetness yeah. and the wine isn't necessarily sweet um mm -hmm. that's that's the, the the funny thing about yeah. it yeah to me it comes across as really rich there's just a lot of everything there's a richness about it just mm. on the nose mm -hmm. mm. and on the palate yeah mm. so if pinot gris a pinot grigio gave you the body of chardonnay almost um mm -hmm. this but with with no oak it's just the body of this grape it right. really is astounding yeah and that will totally affect um the setting uh the mood what you will pair it with mm -hmm. you know so here you're gonna start this is so refreshing yes um you'd agree then then, Definitely. then go in then go into something a little heavier yep yeah i feel like this is a, a better quality uh, pinot gris as well I feel the the mediocre wines or the lower level wines they drink right there locally. Yeah. And the better quality wines they actually ship abroad. Just wow. That's nice about the Alsatian wine. So when you find the Alsatian wine here in the United States, you know it's good quality. Yeah. It'll be it'll be nice. Fabulous. That is so. so oh, well it is their uh, reserve. Um, sometimes Alsace can throw around the term reserve a little mm. bit, but um, but what my experience with this producer reserve is a little better, and boy, it sure tastes like it. Mm -hmm. And we did a very similar price point, so in the sixteen seventeen dollar uh, price point retail. Yeah. Um, very nice wines. You know, I thought it would be obvious which one I prefer, but that's such a beautiful Pinot Grigio. It is, isn't it? I. It's one of the better ones I've ever tasted. So it's a. It's really a tie. I was really hoping this would happen. Yeah. I thought it might. That's why I was so happy when she started telling me something about preferring Pinot Gris, and I almost felt like she was not gonna like the Pinot Gris. I said, "Say no more. We gotta save it for the camera." <laughs> and look what happened. Yeah. yeah, it is. This is this is very good. Yeah, it's lovely. Okay. Good and choice. That is not. This is a uh, from Brooklyn Spirits LLC is the importer. Um, and that's how that's how this wine could be found, BrooklynSpiritsLLC.com, and this is uh, one of my favorites as always, Monsieur Touton. Just love this uh, purveyor, negociant, importer, Monsieur Touton. The whole book, every wine I taste, right there. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. So, and I know you've done a lot of work with uh, with Monsieur Touton. Oh yes. Um, yeah. Wines. Yeah, absolutely. Very reliable, for sure. And there we go. So I need you to sip, subscribe, share, come back for episode two when we talk about dessert wine. And let's chat, chat wine. wine. <laughs> Cheers. You're, a, you're just a great host. <laughs>